Okay, so this is the MBlock IDE. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. So this is where we develop our code and it integrates a few different features. I'm going to move left to right across this screen and just explain each section. Uh, in the left top corner, uh, we have a um, space where we put our graphical objects, uh, things like uh, these pandas, which I should be able to click on and move. Uh, these are what we would call sprites. And I've got my sprites tab selected on the bottom here. You can see that I've got three tabs available to me, to devices, sprites, and background. And in the sprites tab, there's a small box representing each sprite on the screen. Now, handily, when I click on each sprite, you can see it highlights where on the screen that sprite is. So if I select Panda 1, there's a momentary box that tells me which sprite is Panda 1, just in case I can't tell from that graph, that small graphic in the box. Now, if I select Panda 2 on my stage, you can see that the, the name is available in this box, and I could rename that. So I might want to say, let's say I wanted to call that Panda Charlotte, then that might be a bit more easier for me to remember, and maybe I want to call Panda 1 Jason. So I've got Jason and Charlotte, uh, my two sprites, and you can see that I can move them around the screen as I like. Um, as I move my pandas around the screen, you might notice that the two values in this X and Y um, uh, box at the bottom are changing. Uh, now, hopefully, you know enough about X and Y axes to know that X is normally a position along a horizontal frame, and Y normally denotes a position along a vertical frame. So what I should see is as I move my Panda 1, Jason, upwards, then my Y value should be increasing. And we see that Y is increasing. If I move it down, then Y should be decreasing. And what you'll notice is there actually are negative values for Y. In fact, this frame will go roughly um, 169, it appears. Oh no, minus 240. So I think this frame will go a maximum of 300 pixels downwards and 300 pixels upwards with the zero place being in the middle here. So if I move to Y0, we can see that Jason is now at Y0. Um, and the same, the same goes for the X. So if I'm in a, a positive large number for X, then Jason should move to the right. And if I have a large uh, negative value, for the um, for Jason, then he should move to the left. So this is how we position our uh, sprites on the screen using X, Y coordinates. You can see I can also change the size of Jason, so I can have him uh, double in size quite easily, uh, or I could have him half in size. Uh, so we can change the size of our sprites, and also we can change the direction. Now the direction is in degrees. At the moment, you can see Jason is at 90 degrees. Now there's a handy little turner here that I can use to change the direction that Jason is facing. And I can have Jason oscillating like so. Okay, so once, so just a quick recap. This is our stage, and this is how I select the sprites on my stage. I can also change the position of my sprites by either dragging them across the screen or by changing their x, y values in these boxes. I can change the size of my sprites and the direction they're facing, and I can name them so it's a bit more convenient for me to remember. Now to add a new sprite, I need to click this little plus button in the, uh, in the bottom here. And there's a lot of pre-made sprites that we can use. So if I scroll through all, you'll see that you've got a lot of choices of sprites you can use, 40 pages in fact, um, well, 39, I suppose, because there's only one on this last page. So we've got a lot of options of sprites that we could add. Let's say that I want to add one of the earlier sprites. Um, I would like to add 
an ant onto my page, then I will click ant and hit OK, and then the ant is on my page here. Now we all know that ants aren't quite as large as pandas, so what you might want to do is play around with the size of your ant so that its size is a bit more representative of the size of the actual insect. Okay, so we've got our stage, we've got our sprites, and we can change properties of our sprites uh, using these tabs. One other tab that we're going to focus on today, we're not actually going to worry too much about devices. That is going to come eventually, but not just yet. But you may want to change the background on your stage. Now, the way that you can do that is by clicking the plus icon here and selecting a background. Now, let's say that we want a... Our pandas are clearly in a hospital, so why don't we try to go for an indoor space? Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Let's just select the um, icon here. So we'll go for this background. Okay, so we've got a background now. Um, now we can change that. Uh, we can, in fact, add a second background. And then once I click on costumes, uh, that's when I can do things like rename my costumes. So we've got the no backdrop, we've got Office 2, but let's say we're pretending that that's a hospital because of our sprites. And uh, we've got a bedroom sprite. Um, yeah, let's call that bedroom instead of bedroom 3. Okay, so we've got backgrounds that we can refer to, and we have sprites. Now, moving on to the right-hand side, I'm going to click on JSON again. Our backgrounds by clicking on that X at the bottom. And I'm going to move to our code panel, which is... Can I draw on the screen? I'm going to move to this code panel over here. Okay, and hopefully I can get rid of that too. So our code panel is where we get our code blocks. And you can see that there's a bit of code already made for us here. Um, I'm not sure why that's repeated there. Let's move that into our trash. So to delete code blocks that we've put into our coding pane, or script zone, as you might hear it referenced. I quite like that. I'm going to use script zone. So to delete anything in our script zone, we just move it to where it came from and release it. To pull something into our script zone, we just click and drag into the script zone. And what you'll notice is that each of these code blocks, if I move through our tabs, they've got different types of connectors. Now, if I click in a when green flag clicked, you can see that it's not really meant to have anything connecting to it on the top. And of course, I can't get this code block to join with when clicked from the top. However, I can connect them uh, at the bottom. And you can see that because of the shape that they've got. If you've used Scratch programming before, then I'm sure you already know this. And over the next few slides, we're going to be playing around with these code blocks and seeing what useful code we can make. Finally, before you exit this page, you're going to want to save your project. And the way that you would do that is to just click this Save button at the top here. Uh, we won't be publishing yet, but you might, you might play around, do something cool, and want to save it to look at later. Now, to get your own screen, because when we, when we first accessed this site, it already had a bunch of sprites that we don't want. And rather than having to delete, to delete those one by one, to have a completely clean display, we're going to click on File and click New. It will ask us if we want to save the modifications. I certainly don't. I've done nothing sensible in this video. So I'm going to click on Don't Save. And now we've got our completely blank slate. We've got only one sprite, which is our panda sprite, that we can move across the screen. And this is where I'd like you to be for the next couple of slides. So once you've got a new file with your panda and no other code, you're ready for slide two or the next slide.